Hi everyone, hope you had a great new year and a great Christmas holiday and uh, now we're back uh, to trading actually in fact uh, the market is still going to be quiet until probably somewhere around maybe the 8th to the maybe the 15th that the market will start to pick up um, and uh, and yeah so it's back to um, the grind again right and so in this video I'm going to be uh, going over um, the uh, political business cycle and really why the I believe the Federal Reserve are going to be cutting rates and why the uh, US dollar is likely to be at sell at some point this year over the medium to long term. I think uh, as we start the year, in fact, we could actually see uh, and my bias is probably maybe more towards the buying side of the dollar um, in the first maybe two months of the year. But um, as we get closer to um, the uh, elections in, um, in the States, um, then I believe that the Fed will start to cut rates and um, many of you who understand fundamental analysis might be a bit confused because of the fact that the uh, the US at the moment have a, a growing economy, right? So inflation is falling and uh, there's a growing economy. Now, for those of you who are watching this video who, again, don't necessarily um know uh, or unfamiliar, I guess, with how uh, we look at the fundamentals and really fundamentals, I believe, are driven mainly, mainly uh, by uh, interest rates as well as risk uh, off sentiment, right? But if we're just looking at the, f the fundamental side of things, right, we have interest rates. Let me just uh, write this down. So we've got interest rates and Interest rates uh, are either uh, hiked by a central bank, they're held by a central bank, or they are cut by a central bank. And hiking rates usually and typically appreciates a currency, cutting uh, typically devalues a currency, right? And now why would um, a central bank want to uh, influence the value of a currency? And it's mainly due to uh, GDP right gdp and inflation right i'll put inf right so these two uh influence what a central bank does with their interest rates and again just to put this um in kind of really kind of basic and simple terms um central banks um will typically um they have a two percent target yeah and if uh, two percent inflation target and if in uh if inflation is seen as trending above the two percent target then central banks will hike rates yeah and if it's seen as trending below the two percent target yeah central banks are likely to cut and that's what they do that's, that's what they've done historically now where gdp comes into this is um where when when uh the economy is in the business cycle when it's expanding, right? So you have a business cycle which kind of looks something like this, right? And even that you have an inflation cycle and you have an interest rate cycle as well, by the way. Um, and I'm going to get into into cycles. And so um, what you have is a is, is a GDP cycle where you have an expansion phase, right? So you have expansion, you have the boom phase where you have lots of growth, you have the contractions uh, side of things, and then you have the uh, um, recession, then you have a bust or slump, and then you have a uh, recovery, and then you go into the um, expansion, and then boom phase again, right? And really this should be, sorry, I've drawn this a bit wrong, it should kind of be like this, right? Where you expansion, and then you normally typically have the boom again, right? So, uh, and then, then it goes back into the contraction phase, right? So that's the economic cycle. And typically in the, um, in the uh, economic cycle, um, central banks tend to uh, hike rates when they're in the expansion, uh, recovery, expansion, boom phase of the cycle. And they tend to cut when they're in the contraction, recession, bust or slump phase of 
the economic cycle and inflation actually tends to rise, um, typically rises in that expansion boom phase and deflation tends uh, will, will historically take effect um, in the contraction um, re uh, recession boom side of things, right? And so you can kind of overlay both cycles, right? So they high rates, high rates get hiked, whereas inflation goes higher in the um, in the uh, expansion boom phase and then in the contraction a recession bust or slump phase you'll see inflation come down and then you also have the interest rate cycle right which again you can overlay with these as well where you typically have a hike in rates yeah and then uh when when you when you're in the uh, expansion boom phase and that will typically have uh, rising inflation above the two percent target, and then in the contraction recession plus slump phase, you tend to the uh, central banks tend to cut rates, right? And that should typically align with inflation coming down, so deflation, you know, going potentially below the uh, two percent target, and that aligns with also the contraction recession bust or slump phase, right? So it's it's really about the you know the bigger cycles, right? Now understanding this. Um, the Federal Reserve are uh, looking to actually be one of the central banks that are looking to cut rates apparently first, um, which is which is strange, right? Because when you think about uh, where we are on the uh, economic cycle for the Federal Reserve, it was not necessarily for the Federal Reserve, but just where we are on the economic cycle, um, and you look at uh, GDP being at about, I think it's like 5.2%. Yeah. Um, there's really no reason to cut rates at the moment, even though, yes, we know that when you think about cycles, um, you know, we've probably peaked in terms of the economic cycle and we're likely to go into the contraction recession phase but until we really go into the contraction recession phase and by the way a recession is deemed as two uh, negative quarters right so two times uh, you know minus growth right so negative quarters of um of uh of economic growth so just put minus 0 0.1 for example uh, of growth and you know or, or, or lower um, we are nowhere near we are nowhere near in terms of you know the US GDP and I say we but the US are nowhere near um, two negative quarters of um, of negative growth in fact Europe are closer to a recession a technical recession and are likely to go into a recession in their next quarterly GDP reading, which should be, I think, somewhere in um, this month, January, February, right? And so why are the Fed seen as the central bank that are likely to cut first rather than Europe, right? Because inflation is coming down, you know, across the globe. Um, but where Europe are, they're closer to a recession. They're somewhere around here. And you would probably say that the US is somewhere around, you know, the beginnings maybe of their contraction phase, right? So they're up here, Europe are down here, and so is some, you know, the, the, the UK as well, right? But they're also seen as uh, hiking later, oh, sorry, cutting later than the, uh, than the, uh, the US. So again, the question is, why is the Fed cutting rates? And it really... Uh, comes down to what is known as the uh, political business cycle and something uh, that is not really spoken about and really the stars have kind of aligned in terms of um, the, the business political cycle so what I'm going to do is let me just uh, clear this for now and then I'm going to um, go here and read this out just a couple of uh, paragraphs right and so it says the, the political business cycle in economics right is the fluctuation of economic activity that results from an external intervention of political actors the term political business cycle is used mainly to describe the stimulation of the economy just prior to an election 
in order to improve prospects of the incumbent uh, government getting re-elected despite numerous attempts to establish their existence, empirical evidence of political business cycles remains rather equivocal and equivocal means um, subjected to or more interpretations are usually used to mislead or confuse or uncertain in and in as an indication or sign uh, or of uncertain nature or classification so it's not necessarily a science right um, but I believe that um, it makes logical sense and I'm going to break this down as to why um, the uh, the the central bank is going to um, is going to try to assist in even though they should remain neutral uh, they're going to assist in helping uh, to ex uh, what's the word sorry the uh, used to mainly describe stimulation of the economy right why they why they like to stimulate the economy by cutting rates right so cut by cutting rates you ha um, you stimulate the economy and stimulating the economy means um, basically uh, helping businesses right and um, and uh, people to put money in people's pockets and so whenever you uh, cut rates. Yeah, whenever you cut rates, it's important to understand this uh, and the effect of cutting rates and hiking rates. So if you've got, you know, uh, interest rates and you're on, you know, wherever you are in the cycle. Yeah, when you hike rates, the effect of hiking rates is that you are raising borrowing and lending costs. Right. And that affects businesses and, um, you know, uh, mortgage owners. Right. Because. If you uh, have a mortgage that, and your interest rate and your repayment on your mortgage is going higher, then you're going to have less money in your pocket. Same thing if you have a business. Um, instead of you know taking out, you know, expanding your business um, and thinking about expanding and maybe hiring more, if you've got outstanding loans or you want to borrow more money, it's going to be more expensive because the you know the central bank are hiking interest rates. Uh, you want to think twice about either taking on new business or hiring more staff and expanding, right? So what that has the effect of is contracting the economy, yeah? And it's the opposite when you uh, cut interest rates. So as interest rates are being cut, what that does is that stimulates the economy because businesses uh, are likely to borrow more, right? Because the repayments are lower. And hopefully, um, if they are in any kind of trouble, it eases, you know, financial trouble, it eases, um, you know, the burden um, and they can, you know, basically, be, you know, borrow money at a lower interest rate and um, and hopefully, you know, not um, not collapse or, you know, crumble or anything like that. And in terms of helping, you know, the consumer and, and mortgage owners and um, homeowners, it will uh, put money in their pocket by reducing their mortgage repayments, right? Depending on when uh, your term is obviously due for uh, remortgaging. And so it's obviously critical to understand that. And so if the central bank are cutting interest rates, yeah, and stimulating the economy prior to an election to improve the prospects of the incumbent government getting re-elected, yeah, that makes all the sense in the world. And as I said, the stars have kind of aligned because inflation at the moment is coming down, which get, which, you know, typically, uh, you know, would, would be okay. There, there would really be no reason for the central bank to cut rates because inflation is pretty much now at their 2% target. So they would likely hold, especially with the economy doing, you know, so good at the moment. But uh, they're looking to cut quite um quite soon so it says here expansionary monetary and fiscal policies have political politically popular consequences in the short run such as falling unemployment economic growth and benefits from government spending on public services however the same policy especially if pursued to excess are found to have unpleasant consequences in the long term such as accelerating inflation and damaging the foreign trade balance so what that's basically saying is just um you know, expansion every monetary policy and fiscal policy in terms of, um, you know, uh, cutting rates um, can have um, 
if you uh, cut rates, you can have uh, an effect on the economy in the short run, such as falling unemployment, right? And economic growth. As I explained before, if you're a business and you've got, um, you know, lower rates to pay or your, your loans or you can borrow money for cheaper, then you can afford to expand and, and hire people. Therefore, unemployment comes down and, economic, and that should boost economic growth. But you can't do it too much in excess because what happens is if you make money too cheap, and keep cutting, then inflation starts to come back and inflation is the devaluation of a currency, yeah? And so that pretty much spells out why I believe that the um, the Federal Reserve are, you know, are likely, I think, are very likely to want to um, uh, cut rates uh, in the... Uh, this year and it's not really to do f with, with the fundamental side of things purely in terms of um, looking at where you are in on the GDP cycle uh, because as I said you would really kind of cut rates if you were more heading into the recession phase like Europe and the UK but they're not they're really probably somewhere around this and I wouldn't necessarily call it a the boom phase but they're coming down this this end of the cycle into the contraction and by the way cycles are pretty inevitable yeah so you know you might be thinking is there a chance that you could go into the, from the contraction phase um back into the boom phase etc and and that is you know possible um but historically what you would normally have is um is is the cycle kind of follow through right so boom uh bust and then back to boom again right like that and again if we look I say again but if we look at um, the trading economics website and this is interest rates this is interest rates uh, for the US economy and you'll see it since 2000 last 25 years you'll see that interest rates when they start to come up yeah and then they hold rates and then you start to see the cycle right then they cut rates yeah, nowhere really when they start cutting rates do you start to see them then, you know, hike rates, then cut rates, then hike rates, then cut rates, right? Normally the cycle is once they start to begin, then that's the end of the cycle that they're on. And then they start to, you know, the holds can be for a long time or can be for a shorter time, right? Depending on what's happening with the economy and the and inflation, right? And then you have the bottom end of the cycle and you have the interest, then you have a hold for a period and then you have hikes, then you have a hold for a period, then you have a cut, then you have a hold for a period, hikes, then cuts, then hikes. And what should come next, obviously, you know, should come cuts. And so the central banks are pretty much um, beaten inflation. And I wouldn't, I should hesitate to say beaten inflation, but inflation is coming down, disinflation um, um, is, is, is in the works. And so with inflation coming back down to the 2% target, you also have, um, you know, uh, the, the the beginnings of the cycle. Now, another question, finally, before I do go, is um, somebody would probably look to say, well, what if inflation, yeah, what if inflation um, reaccelerates, yeah? Because you can have a situation where inflation, you know, even though it's, you know, in in, in the cycle, it may actually start to. Um, you know, reaccelerate a little bit, and so that is obviously possible. Yeah, in terms of you know, if, if let's say for example the two percent target is here, and let's say for example at you know two, um, maybe this is two point seven percent. Let's say right, and then maybe we get a reading where um, in a quarter or a month where it might go to maybe three percent. Is that possible? Of course, it's possible. Inflation isn't just going to drop like a stone. It's inflation in GDP doesn't necessarily work like how interest rates work in terms of um, in terms of it being a smooth uh, you know smooth sailing on the way down and smooth sailing on the way up as we've just seen. Um, the interest rate cycle. Um, so the GDP cycle and inflation cycle kind of works, if you're looking at it, it probably might work a bit more like this, where you might have um, periods where you might have, you know, loads of numbers. And then within those periods, you may have, um, you know, a contraction side of things or, in, or GDP start to come down a bit, the data starts to come down. Then all of a sudden you might see something like this, there might be periods where um, GDP or inflation, you know, start to go higher as it's coming lower. And make higher, lower highs, lower lows, and then you get this end of the cycle, right? And so within 
these periods, right, these periods here, yeah, on the way down, inflation, you could have a situation where inflation may actually tick higher. But overall, you're looking at the cycle, right? Once it starts to make its way up and then starts to make, it, make its way down, you're going to see periods where you might have in a, when inflation is rising, inflation actually fall for a month or two, right? Or three. But ultimately, this is how it looks in reality. Yeah. And the same thing with GDP. So from GDP, yeah, and inflation, the cycle tends to look something like this. Whereas the interest rate cycles typically, again, historically, uh, at least over the last 25 years, that is. Um, have tended to be a lot more smoother in terms of, uh, you know, hiking and cutting rates. And so is there a chance that inflation could come in? Yes, of course, it could go higher, but it doesn't mean that the central bank is going to change its mind. And so if that does happen in the US um, this year where inflation starts to come higher a little bit, I don't think it will be enough for the central bank to want to... Um, you know, uh, 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 not cut rates, for example, right? I think that they will continue to look to uh, cut rates. I think the only reason why um, they would probably pause or maybe hold, or they could actually even re-accelerate, there is a chance, right? Um, if, you know, there is there is um, a really um, major inflationary event, and that inflationary event may come in the form of... Um, the incidents that is happening in the, I think it's the Red Sea where you have the, I think it's, they're called the Houthi and they are targeting uh, certain tankers um, with regards to Israel and that could uh, lead to shipping disruptions which then leads to supply issues which then raises inflation. So there is that risk, yeah, which could, um, you know, re-accelerate inflation globally um, and let's see how that actually develops. But if there are no risk events like that or risk off events like that, then or, or it doesn't necessarily, you know, um, uh, come to pass or it, 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 you know, they sort that out sooner rather than later, then you're likely to see inflation continue to probably fall and maybe to that 2% target. Um, and if that does start to happen, then what the central bank are likely to do is start to cut rates, yeah, uh, to stimulate the economy. And even though we're at 5.2%, yeah, um, you know, if, if, if they can cut rates and let's say, for example, and re-ignite um, the economy as it starts to necessarily, you know, contract, it might go down to maybe 3%. Uh, and then, you know, maybe it goes to 2% as we head into the election. But then as we start to head into the election and they cut rates, stimulate the economy. And then, you know, people have recency bias. The economy is growing this year. And then we might head back up to 4 5 6% as we're growing because there are rate cuts. And then, you know, Joe Biden can actually say, well, look at what I've done. Look at what we've done to the economy. And he gets... Um, re-elected so the political business cycle you know is something that I believe um, is a real possibility now will it play out this way who knows I haven't got crystal ball but it does look like at the moment this is playing out and this is you know not necessarily being said directly by uh, the banks but a lot of the banks are forecasting um, the central bank to actually uh, cut rates and in fact if I go to uh, the where is it now one second the fed watch tool yeah so this is the CME fed watch tool and what we can see here are the probabilities of rate cuts as the market is pricing it in and in January it looks like it says there is the 15% chance right now of a uh, cut because at the moment and let me just maybe make this uh, slightly bigger right so we can see that to squint um, there's a 15% chance of a rate cut at the moment so you have at the moment the uh, uh, current uh, base rate is uh, 5.25 to 5.5 um, uh, 550 and the uh, chances of it you know being cut is 15% now 
as we go towards March, you'll st start to see those probabilities increase. Right now, we're looking at 73% chance of a cut um, in March. And then in May, it looks like the market is pricing in, you know, um, pretty much a, a nice um, a nice cut uh, right here. Actually, in fact, this is surprising. <laughs> They've actually priced in um, maybe a bit of a hike. It depends. So there's something to that. But in you know in the main in March, which is you know the most recent um, data, they're actually pricing in um, the, uh, the the chances of a rate cut. I'm going to have to look into you know why the market is pricing in actually at the moment um, a rate hike in the uh, um, in June. Mm, that's very strange. Let's see June, and uh, again, we look at June. Um, you know, and we're seeing more cuts coming in to the market. You know, an ease pretty much is a hundred percent in June. In July, again, a hundred percent chance of an ease. Yeah, so it's strange that the that the market in May. Is, is saying that there's an 11% chance of, of an ease and actually a 22% chance of a hike and a 66% chance of no change. So that's a bit of a strange one. But um, nevertheless, you're seeing most of the months looking like, you know, cuts into the November elections, right? So you're seeing a 100% chance of cuts um, pretty much most uh, of the months as we get closer towards the the elections and so that's really you know it's not me you know hypothesizing in terms of uh, you know my theory about things this is what the market is currently pricing in and it makes you know all the sense in the world um, in terms of just the political cycle normally you probably wouldn't have the central bank hiking or sorry cutting first because where they are on their economic cycle is really good but because of the political business cycle, I believe that the uh, Federal Reserve, although it's not said out loud, that's the reason why the market is pricing in uh, rate cuts. And so let's see what happens. If it plays out, brilliant. If it doesn't play out, then um, you know the risk is minimal, really, because you're not committing as much um, capital um, when you're when you're losing, but you know you're going for risk reward trades, uh, high risk reward trades, and so if you're right about a trade, brilliant. You're going for maybe 10, 15, 20 to ones overall. Um, but if you're wrong about it, then um, you know your your risk is defined, so it's not going to be the, it's not going to blow your account right, or you shouldn't necessarily be blowing your account on um, on any one trade idea. And this is just one trade idea that we have this year. There are many more to come and many more that we're looking at as well in terms of, uh, you know, for example, you know, Japan, the Bank of Japan, uh, potentially hiking rates as well, which is another trade idea um, that I speak about in the private mentoring group. So um, I hope that explains things. Um, a bit of quite advanced fundamental analysis, but let's see how this plays out. And if there are any changes, then um, I guess the... Uh, the mentoring, if you're in a mentoring group, you'll definitely be kept up to date on any changes to this uh, trade idea. So um, I wish you all a very uh, happy uh, new year and um, I'll speak to you all soon. Take care.